Okay, so let's assume that we want to go to places. So right now, we have a ship in orbit with a periapse and an apoapsis. Periapsis is the closest point from the reference body to its orbit. So for example, this distance is shorter than this distance. So this is the periapse. Periapse. So if a person wanted to change either the periapse or the apoapse, you have two options. And these are going to be the most efficient ways of changing those altitudes. So the first way is to wait until you're at your periapse and then to burn prograde, also known as the direction you're going in. So let's say we were at our periapse and burned or fired our rockets, that's what burn means, fired our rockets in the direction we're going. So that means we would go even faster. And if we went even faster, that means that we could go farther up. And we get into a higher orbit. And the opposite is true. Let's say we burned retrograde at our periapse. That would, retrograde is the opposite direction you're going. So if we burned at, at retrograde at periapse, we'd be going slower and we wouldn't be able to get as high. So we could end up into an orbit like this. And eventually it's also possible that this periapse would become our apoapse. And this would become the new periapse. There we go. You can do similar things with the apoapsis. At the apoapsis, let's say you burn prograde, the direction you're going, and then you're going to be going even faster. And you'll be able to lift up your prograde to a higher altitude. And again, it's possible that this point right there would become your new apoapsis, and your original apoapsis would become your periapse. And then you can, you, by burning retrograde at apoapsis, yeah. uh, remember the opposite direction you're going, you will lower your periapse mm -hmm. and make it go closer to your reference body. And that's, of course, that's very simple rocket <laughs> mechanics. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much the basic uh, basis of the two other maneuvers that are possibly done. So let's create a new sketch. Discard the current one. Let's say that this is our target body. Let's call it an asteroid. And we're currently orbiting like this. This looks like the periapse. This looks more like the apoapse. Apoapse is probably more to the left. Periapse. So let's say our rocket is currently, let's put it right here. Rocket. And let's say we wanted to actually rotate our current orbit so that this so that the apoapse could go probably we'd want it more that way so in order to do a maneuver like that you would have to burn perpendicular to the way you're currently going so for example let's say we're burning we're currently traveling that way. We, if we burned that way with the engine, this when I say burn this way, I mean that the engine is pointing in the opposite direction as the arrow I wrote, so that we're moving in the direction of the arrow. So when that happens, this it kind of it's not as easy to get your mind around it. But what that will do is, is it changes your vector or the direction you're going. 
so that instead of going only this way, you're also kind of going a little bit that way. And so that means that the apoapsis kind of moves this way. So let's create a new sketch. So that's, I personally, off the top of my head, don't know how a burn like that automatically becomes useful. In my opinion, it's more useful to burn at apoapsis and periaps. But there's a chance that a, a maneuver like that is useful if you miss a periaps or apoaps. So you don't want to wait until you come all the way back. So let's create a new sketch. And you can also do the oppos opposite. So like let's say you're going this way and you can burn this way. Let's say this is our apple apps. It'll move your apple apps this way. That should be an A. So there's one more type of orbital mechanic. And this one is, this one I'd consider easier to understand. It's called inclination. So this time, we're looking at our orbit edge on instead of top down. So right now, our rocket's here, which looks, this looks like Apple apps. So let's draw our rocket. Rocket. And let's say that we want to match the orbit of something that's going, of a planet that's orbiting like that. Actually, that's a bad example. An or like that. Because what I drew before is more, would be more complicated. So let's say we wanted to match orbits with that. Let's get another color. So let's try, let's say that we wait for our rocket to get to that point. And then once we get past that point, we're going this way, we reach the point, and then we come back. So what you want to do then is the closest way is from that point to that point to match. So what you would do is you would burn in that way, perpendicular to your current uh, trajectory. So that while you're burning up, up, there's no up in space, everyone knows, but this is like relative. While you're also trying to go this way, you lift your orbit in that direction. So let me just clean this up a bit. So the result of that burn, let's say you did it for a quick bit, you would end up with an orbit probably more like this. Right? And if you burn long enough, you would get your orbit to be much closer to that of your target body. And you can do the same on the other side. Let's say you're right here and your current velocity is taking you from this point all the way down to that point. So what you would have to do is burn in this direction to change your velocity in this direction. So you'd end up with, if you will say we burn for maybe less than a minute, you'd end up like that, similar to our original one, and if you burn long enough, you'd get like that. Let's... Where's clear? New sketch. There we go. Discard current. And I just want people to remember, you're building a rocket. And this can work both with real rockets and Kerbal Space Program, which I, I, I must admit I play a lot of it. So when I say you want to burn in this direction, you want your rocket so that the fuel is going out this way, but one of Newton's laws 
pretty sure it's second, equal and opposite reaction. So when the fire goes this way, you're pushing, the reaction is that it's pushing against the metal sheet that's probably right there. So it pushes the rocket that way. All right, apparently, all right, uh, actually, let me quick, yeah, it's, um, so, so now you have your basic rocket idea. So now let's say you wanted to get, let's say that this is, let's say, let's call that Mercury. And let's say your rocket's right here. So this looks about your apoapsis. So you want to burn in the opposite direction that you're currently going to lower your orbit farther. And then once you get to that lower orbit, you can keep doing burns like that. And once again, burn prograde. I mean, retrograde, sorry. And you can get a lower orbit every time. And then you can circularize depending on your goal so that you keep burning until there's a less than in my opinion circular with orbits is around 10 kilometer difference between apoapsis and periapsis but it's it's pretty much a minute difference so let's say once we've got our orbit matching up with our target body we have to think about our inclination otherwise we don't get an encounter so our current orbit actually no sorry our current orbit and let's say the orbit of the body we the orbit of the body we want to intercept with is more like that and then our rocket, we'll say, is right here. Then what we'd want to do then is burn. While we're going this way, we want to burn in this direction and lift up and lift up our orbit so that it's so it can be much closer to this. Imagine that's a straighter line. And then after fine-tuning it, you can get a close enough encounter. And in Kerbal Space Program, which is what I base most of my orbital mechanics off of, an orbit will never change. Like, let's say that's the body you're currently orbiting, and this is your rocket. If there's no moon outside of it, that then your orbit will never change. But in real life, even if the planet that might change your velocity is over there, it can be enough to start throwing off your orbit and slowly I, it can like decay it. And, and it looks drastic there, but it's actually not. Or it can even increase your orbit to uh, much larger altitudes. So let's bring up a real a quick real world example. This is a quickly drawn picture of Earth. And we're gonna want and we're gonna call this the International Space Station. I S S. So let's say that when NASA or the ESA or the Russians want to launch a rocket. They launch the rocket from where they are. And of course, it's not like, oh, we'll do it now. They time it so it's as fuel efficient as possible. So now, once they get into an orbit, they plan on changing the inclination, the, which I, I drew this in a bad way, so it's harder to tell. But they change, you change the inclination so that it equals the ISS. 
and then you also change your apoapsis and then your periapsis so that it equals the orbit of the ISS. And then once it gets close enough, then you do some docking, which is like really, really precise so that you dock with the International Space Station. So that's my quick and easy explanation on orbiting. And I hope you like, comment, and subscribe and see what else I do comment what I'm, I'm always open for new science ideas to explain to people like I have chemistry stuff already this is a touch of physics so explain whatever you want Accept, sorry ask and I will explain this is Odalor 8x signing off